Hello friends. Today's case is about an 8-year-old man who has foot exfoliation, loose zonules and a white mature cataract. Now because of these multiple complexities, I'm expecting a difficult surgery. A poor midriasis, dense cataract and shallow antechamber with weak zonules are all have to be dealt with. The plan is to use a pupil expansion device, CT to stabilize the bag and a multi-piece iolin sulcus with optic capture. This is the BHEX ring, uh, innovated by Dr. Suveen Bhattacharji. So there is a constant of space here for me to use the ring. So I am using a OVD just to create some space. I am putting it under the iris so that it lifts up the iris. The idea is I don't want to damage the 10 cm capsule while manipulating the, the ring. So using a 23G forceps through the side port, each of these notches of the ring are engaged into the pupillary margin and I get a decent uh, pupillary size opening. The plan is to perform a 5 mm rexus because my goal is to have an optic capture of the intraocular lens and placing it into the sulcus. So when do I insert the seat here? There's the question I'm asking now. Should I wait or should I introduce it now itself? So I'm just trying to test the bag here. I'm doing a little bit of hydro dissection and to see how much the nucleus is mobile. But I see that the entire the nucleus and the back complex are moving together, uh, indicating that the zonular health is not great. So at this time, I decide that I would want to use a CTR now itself. So before using it, I usually prefer to debulk the cortex a little bit so that it uh, the cortex does not get entangled in the CTR and helps cortex aspiration later on uh, in the surgery. So while removing the cortex, again I can see that the bag is quite uh, freely mobile and uh, loose and the zonular health is really not great. So once having removed the cortex, uh, I create some space by injecting OED under the anterior capsule and then thread in the CTR. At this moment I realize that the nucleus is quite hard, large and bulky. We can see that the bag is moving when the, rex is, when the ring is being manipulated into the bag. The next thing to ponder about is what could be the technique of nucleus division since we are dealing with a very hard cataract uh, with loose zonules and a shallow interchamber. Although my usual technique is uh, the direct chop, in this case I decide otherwise, I am planning to have a 4 quadrant technique, uh, hoping that it's going to minimize the uh, stress on the zonules, the majority of the power is being utilized in the bag itself. While rotating the nucleus, I again use a bimanual technique wherein I uh, press the nucleus down with my sharp chopper and along with it uh, and the FOECO probe, I gently rotate the nucleus. This again helps us in minimizing the stress on the zonules. Uh, while trenching or sculpting, I am using maximum amount of power, uh, stabilize the nucleus and just shave the, uh, the nucleus uh, rather than pushing at it. We should literally see that the nucleus in front of the tip just melts down and this is the best way to core the nucleus without inducing any stress on the zonules. Again stabilizing the lens with the left hand and then uh, doing uh, sculpting uh, by manual rotation. So I am able to create four grooves here and the depth is very critical because I want to separate them without any uh, stress on the zonules. So all the grooves are 90% deep, uh, deep here and using the FACO probe and my chopper I gently separate each of these fragments and the separation cannot be achieved in a single go so we need to use the two instruments at multiple levels so that we can achieve the lateral separation without causing any stress on the zonules. Uh, again I am repeating the use of OVD uh, just to keep the bag stretched. So having 
separated the all the four fragments we are left with now four fragments which are moderately large they're not tiny so again when you're emulsifying we need to ensure that they don't come too much into the entry chamber uh, and i'm trying to ensure that i'm as close to the pupillary margin and within the bag as possible by adjusting my parameters appropriately the chamber depth is maximum at the center so i want to ensure that my probe is just dead on at the center and i want the nucleus just to uh, dance around my phaco tip and then get aspirated this is probably the best i can do to minimize damage to the corneal endothelium again i am maneuvered the the fragment out of the bag at the level of the capsular axis and then trying to consume it a little bit of slowness helps here because we are able to control the fragment a little bit better uh, note that the chatter is minimized here there is hardly any chatter or turbulence uh, all these things strategies are going to help us in minimizing the amount of corneal damage which you are going to induce after removing every fragment i am again refilling the chamber and the bag with viscoelastic and then consuming the fragment so this is the last fragment and uh, i could achieve this without any much of an uh, issue so having removed all the nuclear fragments i just want to go with my by manual cannula just to see if any cortex again i can see the bag is extremely loose here but at this moment i am thinking i'm relieved and the majority of the job is done and my job is now to put in the lens now i'm creating some space uh, under the iris and above the anterior capsule i'm using sodium hyaluronate i want to place the uh, lens in the sulcus the haptics in the sulcus with an optic capture so the lens is gently maneuvered into the uh, the ciliary sulcus just above the anterior capsule uh, this is the sensar multipiece lens which i'm using at this moment i thought the job is done everything is over but little did i realize that it's far from being over yet picture abhi baki hai well something else has escaped my attention i need to remove the behex ring now i'm disengaging the notches from the pupillary margin and i'm trying to remove it just as i'm trying to remove it i can see that something is wrong here a vitreous band is entangled and probably it has prolapsed through the transzonular region and so i need to cut it At this moment i realize that again an additional step has to be done I start all over again and i'm using tri diluted triamcinolone acetate to stain the vitreous clearly the vitreous band is seen prolapsing through that zone across the zonules uh, after doing the uh, limited anti vitrectomy i go back and try to stain the vitreous again it reconfirms that the prolapse of the vitreous is still there so i thought the best way to deal with this transzonular vitreous prolapse is from the posterior aspect that is from the past pana root so that would be the best approach i thought and now so i need to make a um, sclerotomy before that i'm trying to pressurize the globe by using uh, ovd 3 mm behind the limbus i'm making my sclerotomy using an 
MVR played. I am introducing my 23G cutter through the sclerotomy and aim is to do a limited anterior vitrectomy. Uh, the care has to be taken that I don't damage the capsular bag. Hence it becomes critical for me to ensure that the vitrector port is facing a posteriorly or sideways but not anteriorly. Once having done a limited anterior vitrectomy, uh, there is only one band which is left which is prolapsing through the area which cannot be accessed from the posterior aspect. I come back anteriorly and finish this uh, job. So once the vitreous is removed, I need to take care of the OVD. The OVD in front and behind the lens is being removed now. I have used sodium hyaluronate and it helps because it can be removed quite easily and completely. Once the OVD is removed, it's time to achieve the optic capture. My left hand has the irrigating cannula. Using the, uh, the Sinsky hook, I am gently manipulating the optic of the lens. Uh, into the bag by pushing it and nudging it sideways. The successful optic capture is indicated by the ovalization of the rexus. The haptics are in the sulcus and the optic is in the capsular bag, nicely overlaid by the, the anti-capsular flaps. I inject a little bit of a pilocarpine and confirm the absence of vitreous by using tramsilon acetate and then hydrate the wound. Now is the time to close the sclerotomy. I am using 80 Vicryl to do the same. I close the conjunctiva and the case is done. The next post-op day, as expected, there was some amount of conyl edema, uh, but eventually it cleared off and the patient did well.